Welcome back to Blue Book. Today, Kettle Done. This is a crispy fried pork chop served over rice with onions and egg. So let's get started. To begin with, we're gonna get a good thick pork chop. I'm gonna quickly just remove the bone. Feel free to buy this without it. And then I'm going to just remove that skin and that's gonna stop us having a chewy texture in our final katsu. Now, whatever you do, do not remove that fat. That's gonna give us so much extra flavor. But I am gonna make sure that I just cut down my fat and that's gonna make sure that when it fries, it fries flat and doesn't curl up. I'm going to take my rolling pin, get out a little bit of anger, a little bit of frustration until they're around one half an inch thick. Okay, now we're just going to go on to our breading station. I've got my pork chops that are really well seasoned. I'm just talking a fair bit of salt. Then going to put that into just some flour. Now, a lot of people say to season the flour. I think that is absolutely pointless. Might as well just season the pork chop itself. I'm then going to put that in just some whisked egg, making sure that is really well coated. You've got to make sure every little bit of flour is hydrated. That's going to form a glue. And then I'm just going to pick that up and chuck that into my panko breadcrumbs. Now, if you get a good brand of panko breadcrumbs, you can actually see you get these really thick bits of bread. And that's just going to add to our crispiness overall. Now, the other thing to be aware of is you really have to press the breadcrumbs in with your palm. That helps them really connect and stay onto your pork. Now, if you're learning anything here, please just give us a like, give us a subscribe. It really helps the channel a lot. Let's get back to it. Now we've got a really good coat. We're just going to hold it up. One to show the camera, the other just to shake off a little bit of that excess breadcrumb. Now for katsudon, we need to make some rice. So all I'm gonna say for this is please make sure you wash that rice two or three times until that water runs clear. Now to a small saucepan, I'm going to add 400 mils of water along with 60 grams of mirin, 25 grams of soy, and 10 grams of rice wine vinegar. Now I'm gonna let that come to a boil before adding 20 grams of sugar and then another 15 grams of bonito flakes. Then immediately turn the heat off and let that rest for five minutes. And when that's done, chuck that through a mesh strainer. And then we get this beautiful amber liquid that is gonna add so much flavor to our rice. Okay, now we're gonna heat up some neutral oil to 175 degrees, and then we're going to place in our pork cutlet. And in about three to four minutes, we should get a beautifully crispy brown piece of pork. Now when you take that out, after about two to three minutes, it's actually gonna to start to turn a shade darker. So just make sure it doesn't get too dark in the actual fry. Now in a pan over a medium high heat, I'm gonna add all of my sauce. And then I'm gonna add around one quarter of an onion. And I'm gonna make sure that's reasonably thickly cut. And that just gives us a really good bite to our onions. And then I'm gonna cook that for around five to six minutes. Now, while that's going, we're gonna cut into our katsu pork. Now, you wanna wait for this to cool down regularly if you're doing just a plain katsu, because the steam causes you to lose some of that crunch. Now, for us, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be putting it into a liquid, but just for now, just admire how crunchy that looks. Seriously, katsu is so easy to do. Now I'm just gonna place that into my pan. Now we are gonna lose some crispiness here, but it's just gonna soak up that sauce and just get a new depth of flavor. And then I'm just gonna take a single egg. I'm gonna whisk that for around five seconds, just enough to incorporate it, but not enough to break all those proteins down. I'm gonna just place it over the side and then get my chopsticks and push it up over my pork. Now we're then gonna cook this for around two to three minutes. Now if you wanna speed that up, feel free to just add a lid over the top there and then you only need to cook it for around 30 or so seconds. There we go and look at that, a beautifully cooked egg over the top there and a really good amount of liquid in the bottom and that's just gonna go and flavor all of my rice as well as just soaking right into the crumb of that katsu. That is Japanese katsudon done from scratch. One of the most simple Japanese dishes you can do. It's got some sweetness, some sour, some saltiness, all soaked up in that katsu breading. Now please give this one a shot. It's really easy to do. And until next time, have a darn good week.